As a new Jewish believer, I met Catherine Kuhlman. She had more miracles than anyone I'd ever seen. But she had a secret. It was her relationship with the Holy Spirit. My next guest has this same intimacy. He moves in major miracles continuously and wants to teach you next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Well, my guest, Jim Hockaday, I've been waiting for him and I'm going to tell you why. Because when I say I've been waiting for him, I'm reminded of someone I met by the name of Catherine Coleman. Catherine Coleman had the most outrageous, the most number, the most wonderful miracles of just about anyone I'd ever seen. And her key, if you will, was she was in love with God. She had such intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I remember she used to say, please don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's all that I have. And then after the Catherine Coleman era, we moved into what's known as the Word period, where people overdosed on the Word. First they overdosed on intimacy with God. Then they overdosed on the Word. And God demonstrated himself strong by standing on the Word. God demonstrated himself strong by having an emphasis of intimacy with God. But what would happen, Jim Hockaday, if we could put both of those together? It's got to be an end time dynamite of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly where we're walking into that day, where they balance out each other. And uh, the Holy Spirit gives such revelation to the Word, but the Word is just as much fellowship with God, and it confirms what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. So there is a balance, and that's exactly how I've endeavored to pattern my life. Well, Jim had quite a training. I believe uh, you didn't have much to do with it. I believe right. that God directed you. He, he directed him to be a singer for the Rhema Singers. And in order to be a singer, there was a requirement. You had to go to school there. That's right. But you got to know Kenneth Hagin uh, very well. Yes, sir. And. I believe that his greatest desire is for someone like you and many of the others that he trained to stand on his shoulders and take what he, the revelation he had, and take it even further. But if I was to force you to tell me one thing you learned from Kenneth Hagin, who's in heaven right now, what would that be? Well, let me, let me back up to say that, that so many would say Kenneth Hagin had an amazing love walk, and he did. He had an amazing faith walk, and he did. But the one thing that stands out to me is he knew God. There was such a deep intimacy with the Holy Spirit, and it wasn't something that was in the platform alone. This is how he walked with God on a regular basis. And that doesn't mean that he didn't have fun, because he was quite an individual. And uh, we certainly had many opportunities to have a lot of fun being in the group and, and times after the services. And he might be the first one to throw a spit wad at you or a, or a rubber band, you know. Right, but, but now that wasn't your legacy, though. Your legacy was modeling yourself after a man that, that walked Absolutely. a love walk. Absolutely. And, and this, is, this is why it's interesting to see his natural side, but to see that he incorporated his knowledge of God through all of it. And now, now, when you started in the healing school, yes, sir. I understand Jim didn't see many people healed. Th that's got to be very frustrating. People come from all over the world to sit in this healing school, and they've heard about Ken Hagen, and you must have felt awful. For the first three months, it was a terrible feeling because I knew that it was right for me to be there, and God directed me, as you said. Uh, we saw a lot of people die. And, uh, of course, you can't, you can't advertise that. <laughs> no. And uh, so, um, you know, it, it was a, a deciding moment for myself. Lord, something has to change. And, and uh, just to say, typically, you know, we'd always say, well, you know, God wasn't moving or the people weren't in faith. But I went to the Lord and said, I'm the problem. The people normally aren't that honest, are they? <laughs> I don't think so. But that's where, that's where you begin with God to have a revelation for yourself. 
And when I became honest like that, I said, Lord, this is what I'm supposed to do, but I know I'm the problem, so teach me. And when he began to teach me and took me right to covenant to do so and to begin with the blood covenant, immediately the miraculous began to happen. Something about the blood <laughs> that releases the miraculous and, of God. And it was the blood that gave me the boldness to know that God would back me up. And that's when things began to happen, right in the services, sometimes without even a laying on of hands. Uh, you know, when I started uh, getting your teaching, something amazing happened to me. Hmm. And the thing that was so amazing is I believe that there is an impartation of supernatural boldness in the way that you pray for people. Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, and I was at my home congregation. I had a word of knowledge. I, I said, someone's neck is, is healed. And I had just heard your teaching, which we'll get into in the yes, next sir. segment. Uh, I said to this woman, the minute my hand touches your forehead, the pain will be gone. Oh, yeah. And so I said that to her, and then I'm thinking, what happens if she's not healed? But before I could even get that thought out, I put my hand on her head, and praise God, she was healed. I yeah. couldn't believe I yeah. said that. Yeah. But because of what you teach, I jumped into that arena. Does that make yeah. sense to oh, you? Oh, it was a process uh, through so many experiences, just exactly as you mentioned. Uh, hold uh, that thought. I want you to tell me about the woman you sent to the run water and uh, the tumor. Uh, don't go away. <laughs> You'll be shocked by this. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jim Hockaday, and we are just inhaling the rarefied air of heaven. But I learned something from studying what Jim taught on. And I just explained it. It's sort of a, an outrageous, supernatural boldness. Uh, but you, you had to share some of these stories. Tell me about the woman with the tumor. Uh, it, was, it was an interesting story. It was in a classroom where Kenneth Hagin would speak. And um, he asked me to do his class. And on purpose, just to kind of stir some things up, uh, I called this woman forward. And she had, I didn't know it, but she had a tumor in her chest the size of a grapefruit. So without laying hands on her at all, I just said, go right now to the restroom, take another woman with you. I said, put some water on it and watch it disappear. Stop. I have to ask a question sure. for myself and for you, too. When you said that to her, did you hear her in your spirit? You were supposed to say that to her? What was going on inside of you? You know, there have been times when I have a direct word from the Lord, say this. But or in do this, this case. No, not at all. That's what I thought when not I heard all. that story. Not at all. I, I, just cha I just challenged to go beyond myself, put myself out there on God. Okay, what did you say to her? I told her to go to the restroom, take someone with her, and just sprinkle some water on that area and watch it disappear. So she did that? Well, she, we didn't even have to ask her the question. She came running through the doors, shouting and screaming and running all the way up to the front the whole way up. You didn't have to ask her what happened. But we did, of course, and it disappeared right there in front of her. Okay, I have to ask the question. You do this, I assume, often. Have you done it where someone's come back and they said, nothing happened? We had, one, we had one lady that was very, very interesting. One lady that I sent out and I told her, I said, now, uh, go out to the restroom and come back. She came back. She said, it's half the size. I said, all right. I said, you won't go out two more times without it being gone. And this particular lady came back. Now, each time she came back and I told her when to go, it had become very hot the second time, and the third time she came back, but instead of coming up to the front to be excited about telling me, she stood in the back, and I knew that she was going to tell me it hadn't disappeared. So I made a big to-do. I said, oh, there's our miracle lady right in the back. Come on up and give us our testimony. And she said, well, it's still hot, but it's still there. And I was teaching on the boldness of faith. So I walked right off the platform, walked right up to her nose and said, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you. I said it would leave. She said, well, what am I going to say? It's still there. I said, but I but said, I said it would leave. leave. She said, it's, it's still, still there. there. And I got real loud. I said, but, but I, I said, said it would leave. leave. And she looked at me kind of frustrated. And she said, well, then, OK, it left. It left. I said, check it now. And it disappeared. 
Come on now, between you and me. Yes, Don't sir. Don't you sure. ever think to yourself, well, what if I said, I said, <laughs> it doesn't disappear. Don't you ever think about that? Well, again, absolutely you do. And, and, and your statement about the mind and just, just the, the battle bypass. that you go through. <laughs> but, but again, um, I'm talking about letting the Lord begin to teach me and train me. The first time it was the Spirit of God that just so loudly in my heart said, say this. And I did. So I'm letting him teach me to the point where now I'm starting to think like him. You're even hearing things in, in dreams about your family. Yeah. Uh, tell, give me one example. Well, uh, one example was uh, about my, my girls. And I uh, had two days in a row had a dream about my oldest girl. She's a great girl, wonderful. And when the Lord gives me a dream about my family, so far what it's been is something out in the future. In other words, let's mm -hmm. stop this now or make some corrections so this doesn't happen. And so the Lord just shared with me that just, just begin to study her and watch her. And I began to see certain patterns. And I thought, you know, I want to begin to teach her how can we do it. And out of that time, we now have uh, about uh, 15 to 20 youth that come to our house. And we teach them in a Bible study. And uh, my girls are just doing great. It's wonderful. So dreams are starting to become a regularity. Well, you know what's so wonderful? It's not just for healing. It's for all of life. God's concerned about every aspect of your life. Now, when you were a young man, and you didn't understand what you understand today, no. uh, you developed a disease that you should have died from. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, it, the disease is called Crohn's disease, which, which uh, 30 years ago wasn't as prominent as people have accepted it today. And, um, you know, it's, it's in the intestine. There's quite a battle with uh, your body fighting against itself, autoimmune disease. And at any rate, yeah, I, um, I had some serious problems, a big abscess in my, my belly. And uh, it was even during those days, not understanding healing, the Lord caused that tumor supernaturally to, be, to begin to come out of my body. So I had some surgery um, and was doing really well. But uh, six years ago, I had an, a major attack on my, on my life. And... Uh, now, how, how, what effect does it have, someone that is not just teaching healing, mm -hmm. but bold? Mm -hmm. I mean, you are in the category mm -hmm. of bold mm -hmm. for healing, and you have, this comes back, you have to have the memories of what sure. happened when you were younger. Sure. Uh, you're now in ministry. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Do you keep quiet about it? Do you not let anyone know this is going on? Do you uh, drop out of ministry? Do you what? What do you do? Well, when this first happens? of all, first of all, it was pretty obvious what was going on because as as my weight is about consistent as it was mm -hmm. then, 170 pounds, I went down to close to 125 pounds. So I. I so did I, you drop out of ministry? Uh, well, I, I canceled a few meetings initially, but then no, I, I in fact one of the greatest. Uh, uh, experiences I had in healing came with a six-day meeting, two-a-days, where I actually went at 125 pounds. Showed up and the pastor just kind of looked at me as okay. though what happened. Yeah, and I told him, I'm here to preach. He said, I'll take the services for you. I said, not unless you want to send me home in a six-foot pine box. I said, you let me preach. In the Word of God, He will heal you. Well, I simply said to him, go home, eat whatever you want. Go to sleep. And I did, and as I did, uh, stronger and stronger I became, and my body became completely normal. Come to our service, they go home. I gained over 38 pounds in that one week. They wake up, they're straight as an arrow. When you come back, I'm going to have a man that is as bold as anyone I've ever met in believing God's Word out of intimacy with God and revelation of God's Word from this intimacy, pray for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jim Hockaday. And uh, Jim, when people sit under your teaching, yes, they get healed. But better than that, they have the faith level to then pray for other people. Tell me about that medical doctor. Well, uh, he's a wonderful man, and, and, and back in what we might call the charismatic renewal time where the Spirit of God was really ministering in a lot of denominational churches, uh, he has a, had a practice, um, a really successful practice in Tulsa. 
and he'd pray for people left and right and he had all kinds of healings take place in his office and then through a period of getting more word conscious and leaving out the Holy Ghost that's happening to a lot of people. Well, it you know? does, it does, and that's where we want to bring it, the it, balance it, back. It's kind of easy to get into formula rather than relationship. So he, he fell into that trap. He did. And the, and and the healings diminished. It did. It actually did, completely. Completely? Yes. Hmm. And he didn't see anyone healed as he would pray for them instantly because he was, in a sense, kind of talking himself out of it. Hmm. And, uh, and when he got, came to the healing school and he began to get in, into some of our teaching, which we always really empower the people to believe in the anointing that abides in you, not just me, the minister, but what abides in you. Um, it wasn't long before uh, it just began to happen supernaturally again. Uh, the miracles began to take place. People he prayed for were then instantly healed as well. And, of course, recovered as he prayed for them as well. But uh, that, that to me stands out as a story. And if that was the only isolated case, I probably wouldn't mention it. But I can tell you story after story after story of the same situation. Okay, but what I want you to tell the people. I want you to mentor them in having intimacy with God. Would Amen. you do that? Yeah, absolutely. It's just so awesome to know that God has come to live in this flesh of ours. Now, He's there not for the purpose of just walking around as you walk. He's there for the purpose of being revealed. That's the one amazing thing about human beings, that we have the capacity to receive God into our life, but also to reveal Him. Jesus showed us that on the Mount of Transfiguration, which is what was in Him, supernaturally became evident to those around. Now, when you begin to pray in the Spirit and develop a prayer life and begin to put your emphasis on His presence being with you and around you at all times, the greater you recognize Him in your life, the easier it will be to see the supernatural take place. And that comes through spending time praying in the Holy Ghost and then letting the Word of God become your foundation for the miracles you will see. And this is exactly what we do. It, it begin to get people excited about the Spirit of God. So even right now, I know, and I want to just speak to someone, that God's speaking to you right now that there's someone with uh, uh, some type of hyaluronal hernia, and that's being healed. And I also want to say there's someone that didn't develop in your diaphragm, but the Lord Jesus is healing you right now. And I know the Spirit of God is moving through the airwaves to touch your life and bring deliverance. And in a few moments, we're going to pray for many things in general. And you watch, God will touch you and heal you through Tell the same presence. Just tell me you guys, I think it's a fascinating story. I believe it might have been in Brazil. Someone had polio. A little boy had polio and he was sitting in the very front seat right next to the pastor's wife. And as I prayed for him, and I didn't pray for him by touching him. There were too many people. Uh, the, the main platform where we would have prayed for the folks was covered with individuals. There were 9,000 people in the room. And I just looked at him and prayed for that little boy. And that leg that was all twisted up, it shot straight out. Now, after the service... Yeah, even though you've seen a lot of miracles, that has to do something to you. Oh, uh, well, especially a young boy. Yes. You know, and there was another young boy that came up that was deaf and mute, and we prayed for him, and instantly he began to speak and See hear. That? He was deaf, and now he can hear. Praise that was God. awesome. Well, the pastor's wife came up to us afterwards and said, when you commanded that boy to be healed, my eyes were opened and I saw a large angel walk up to that boy, grab his leg, and jerk it straight out. Look at that. You see that? You see that? God works. God works. I'm telling you, he had polio. Now I can walk. I wonder if a healing angel does not accompany you when you pray. Well, just within the last week, a man came up to me and said, while you were praying for the people, I saw an amazingly large angel that stood right behind you. And that, uh, I guess, happens almost every, everywhere we go. Would you pray for people right now? Absolutely, and they'll be healed too. Oh, I, oh they are getting bold again. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, amen. <laughs> well, just put your hand where your difficulty is. And I know for sure 
right here. We'll hear testimonies about cancer that dies. So put your hand right where the problem has been. In the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, because of the goodness of God and the finished work of Christ, I command disease to begin to dissolve right now. We demand that it die and, be, and dissolve, disappear and leave your life. I just speak to the heart and command it to begin to beat like it should and to the blood to begin to flow as it should, to bones and to muscle and to tissue, for pain to leave all of those areas. For internal diseases we command to depart in the name of Jesus, and especially cancer. I demand that you die and leave those people. Even gross will disappear. I know that God's healing you right now, and all you got to do is just lift up your hands and rejoice because he's giving you something right now supernatural natural. You'll see it evident in your life in Jesus name. Amen. As you were praying, I could feel it was almost like a river was going out. And the thing that I love about you is your greatest desire is not to be known as the person yes, that prays for miracles, but the person that equips other people yeah. to pray for miracles. Give me one nugget that you've learned over the years that will help us in praying for the sick. If you needed a coffee and I had five dollars on my in my wallet, I could buy you a coffee. Of course. If you needed a coffee and I only had a dollar, nowadays there are a lot more than <laughs> they used to be, then I'd have to say, well I can help you, but I can't give you the if you don't know what you have, you can't give it away. If you don't believe it's enough, you'll never be bold enough to say, I have the answer for you. Peter and John went to the temple at the hour of prayer and they said, such as I have, I give you. They were conscious that they had what was necessary to get the job done. That's what Jesus left upon their soul, is an understanding that freely you've received what I have and what I've worked. Now freely give it away. Yeah, but that was Peter and John. It doesn't make any difference. Now it's even greater. Now, when you understand you have something to give, that's where the boldness comes, and that's where the anointing is released. People lay hands on folks all the time, and you'll just wear the hair off of people's <laughs> head. If you don't release the anointing, that's what we're teaching people, to turn the anointing loose. And you know, releasing the anointing, turning that anointing loose, as Jim explained, it's for his family. It's for your finances. Yes, sir. It's for your health. It's for your peace. It's for supernatural protection. Uh, it's for anything that can happen to you in this life. But you can't turn that anointing loose unless you know the person that's anointed you. And his name in Hebrew, Yeshua. Amen. In English, Jesus. And he gave us such a marvelous gift. It's not based on any of our works. There's nothing we can do for it. We just receive his mercy. He's paid the penalty for us. His blood washes away our sins if we repent of our sins and believe that his blood washed it away and makes us clean. He goes a step further. He says he even makes us righteous. We have the righteousness of God in Messiah Jesus then you ask him to live inside of you. And what Jim was saying is happening in his life. And what Jim was saying is happening in that doctor's life. And what Jim is saying is happening in anyone's life is all based on having Jesus live inside of you and realize the great, awesome power of God, the creator of the universe, is living in you. I mean, come to your senses. 